Hey guys, thanks for joining me for another episode of This Week in BJJ. I'm Budo Jake, and on today's show, August 5th episode, I'm going to talk about my thoughts of the Five Grappling Super League, which was last weekend. I'm going to have Dave Kama on for an interview and techniques. I'm going to talk about some new products that have come out, EBI4, and a big announcement. Let's get to it. Before we get to the news, I want to remind you guys about the best new product on the market, Kali Cure. It's a great way to take care of cauliflower ear, that ugly ear syndrome that you get from grinding your ears against other guys in class. Check it out on buddhavideos.com. It's a great product. I wish it was around when I was dealing with cauliflower ear, and I know that if I have that problem again in the future, that's the first thing I'll turn to. So last weekend was Five Grappling's Super League event. You heard me talk about this event for the past few weeks. It was an eight-man tournament, eight-woman tournament, and two super fights. I'm not going to go over everything, um, but I'm going to talk to you about my five thoughts on the Five Grappling Super League. First up, uh, Tim Spriggs, spoiler alert, Tim Spriggs won the eight-man division, and he fought very aggressively and uh, did very well, of course, uh, winning the whole thing. Um, although, I think he might have learned uh, one tactic from Polaris, Husamar Polaris. Uh, he had a, a neck slap. You know, when he went in for the clinch, he would really hit the guy hard in the back of the head, and a lot of his opponents looked towards the ref, uh, wondering if, it, uh, if he should have been warned by that, about that, and, uh, and he wasn't. And it just kind of brings up a thought, you know, at what point does a clinch become a strike? Um, that's something that maybe the referees are going to have to think about in the future. But congrats to Tim on, uh, on your accomplishment. Number two, uh, Gary Tonin had a super fight with Joao Miao. This is a rematch from the jiu-jitsu battle. And uh, it was a really interesting match. You can tell that Gary had been planning for Joao. He had some amazing leg lock setups uh, against Joao's Barambolo. You know, when you face a guy like Joao, somebody who has a very predictable game, you can really game plan. And I can tell that uh, John Danaher, who is Gary's coach, um, really planned for this. And John was coaching him through the whole thing. Gary had Joao in some super deep heel hooks, and uh, Joao's defense was just incredible. Um, but yeah, it, uh, watch that match and pay attention to Gary's setups um, attacking the Baron below. I think there's a lot to learn there. Third thought is that, uh, as I just mentioned, Joao was stuck in some deep heel hooks, and I think Joao might not have any tendons. You know, I don't know how many of us can uh, can watch that match and really replicate what Joao was doing because uh, it looked deep to me. But yeah, Joao seemed to walk around fine after the match. So amazing. Number four, Mackenzie Dern. Uh, another spoiler, spoiler alert, Mackenzie won the eight-woman division, and uh, she was just on fire. She had three matches and three submissions, and the final match was super fast. Uh, Mackenzie is a relatively new black belt, but she is looking great, so congratulations, Mackenzie. And finally, the fifth thing, this is uh, not something new, but something that I'm reminded of. And uh, I was sitting mat side so I could hear uh, everything that was going on, and it, I was just reminded at how much you can learn by listening to the coaches. Of course, you can learn by watching the competitors, but when you hear the coaches, uh, who are usually very well-trained, long, you know, experienced guys, telling their students what to do, it really puts you inside the mind of the coach. And I think, um, for sure, I, I learned a lot just by listening to what they were telling their students to do. And sometimes the student's able to do it, sometimes he's not, but it just kind of, you know, I kind of put that in, in my mental, uh, in my mind, thinking like, wow, next time I'm in that situation, now I know what John Danaher would do in that situation, or I know what Kyle would do. So um, just something to think about. Next time you're watching an event, whether it's live, uh, whether you're there at the venue or watching on a pay-per-view, see if you can listen to what the coaches are saying. You might learn something. So congratulations to the five guys. I thought it was a great event, um, big success. Everybody really enjoyed it, and um, and uh, hopefully they do many more of these events. The replay is available for half price. It's only twelve dollars and fifty cents on FiveGrappling.com. That'll be available until August eighteenth. So don't wait on that. Uh, get it while you can. There's a lot to learn from those matches. Speaking of great events. 
Uh, there is another one coming up this month on August 15th. EBI 4 is going to take place. That's going to be live at the Orpheum Theater in downtown LA. Of course, you can watch it live in LA if you're if you want to go to the theater, or you can watch it live on BuddhaVideos.com. Uh, again, we'll be handling the production, so you know it's going to be a solid live broadcast. And if you watch any of the, the previous events, you know how exciting EBI is. You're almost guaranteed a submission in every single match, and I can't tell you what a difference that makes in terms of uh, the spectators. You know, the spectators loved it. it uh, it's very clear who, in the spectator's mind, who the better grappler is when you see a tap. So I am super excited about EBI4, and uh, we'll be talking about more of that in the next uh, couple weeks. But head to budovideos.com slash EBI4 for more information. And be sure to block off August 15th on your calendar for that. And by the way, EBI3 is up on YouTube totally for free on Eddie Bravo's channel. So uh, watching that might give you a little better indication of what you're in for for EBI4. Now, we got a big announcement. Um, what a month August is. We had the five grappling super league. We have EBI4. And now I'm pl proud to announce that on August 29th and 30th, we will be doing the live broadcast for ADCC. ADCC is the Abu Dhabi Combat Club, the largest no-gi uh, jiu-jitsu tournament in the world. It has all the high-level guys the biggest cash prizes in jiu-jitsu every two years it's held in a different location this year it's in sao paulo so we'll be heading down there in a few weeks and doing the live broadcast it's a two-day event august 29th and 30th and um and if you love jiu-jitsu this is the match this is the event to watch there's going to be a super fight between cyborg and andre galvao as well so what an amazing month to be a jiu-jitsu fan so be sure to mark that off on your calendar as well. Again, uh, last weekend of the month, August 29th and 30th, go to buddhavideos.com slash ADCC2015 for more information, and that'll be updated, updated as more information comes out. All right, guys, now it's time for new products. We have been focusing on a lot of new on-demand content. We've gotten a lot of great feedback from customers that they uh, they like the on-demand format. It's very secure and, um, and great quality on BuddhaVideos.com. It doesn't matter where you are in the world. You don't have to wait for shipping. Uh, it's right there, instant access. So we put a lot of new products out recently. Uh, three new items came out from Nick Gregoriartis. Nick is uh, Roger Gracie's first black belt. He's a very uh, good instructor course natural fluent English and he has three products one's called journey into jiu-jitsu there's another one called progressive jiu-jitsu then the biggest one is called BJJ building blocks check those out on buddhavideos.com for more information I'm sure you'll learn a lot from those next up is something that's not a brand new product but it's new in the on-demand format and that is Gordo's half guard series who is Gordo he's the guy that revolutionized the half guard you might some of the new school guys might not know this, but half guard was not always what it is today. Now it is a common place to sweep, uh, take the back, recover guard. Before it was something that uh, was, generally speaking, viewed as an inferior position. It was halfway to getting your guard passed. So if you were in half guard, you were struggling to try to recover closed guard. Uh, but Gordo was basically the first guy who really used that position for sweeps and submissions. So uh, he's a true innovator and uh, why not learn from the source? It's a three volume series from Gordo on the half guard. Available on demand on buddhavideos.com. Finally, the last uh, on-demand content that we've released is a bunch of catch wrestling stuff. And, uh, you know, if you've only focused on jiu-jitsu, the show is m mainly on jiu-jitsu, then you should, you know, venture out a little bit and see what the catch wrestling guys have been doing for a long time. They have a little different outlook and uh, some really cool techniques, including a lot of content on the Kimura or the double wrist lock, as they call it. But uh, anyway, we got this new content by Josh Barnett. Billy Robinson and Wade Shales. Uh, check out, and more coming too. So check out all that on buddhavideos.com as well. Finally, the last one, uh, Bernardo Faria released a four DVD set on pressure passing. I talked about this last week. Uh, Bernardo is a 2015 double gold world champion. He won his weight class and the absolute division. He's had 15 jiu-jitsu matches in 2015. He's passed the guard of all 15 opponents and, uh, and secured the victory in all those matches as well. So he shows you all the ways to deal with the modern jiu-jitsu guards in this four DVD set. And the price is unbelievable for limited times, only $77. 
those have been on pre-sale for a couple weeks, but they are sh starting shipping today. So uh, look for your tracking number if you have ordered it already. If you haven't, um, like I say, I'm not sure when the price is going to go up, but now would be a good time to jump on that. You know Bernardo's the guy that can not only teach it, but also execute it at the highest levels. The pressure Passing 4 DVD set by Bernardo Faria. Check it out on budovideos.com. Okay, guys, that's all the news for today. Now we are going to go to an interview with Dave Kama. Dave is a longtime Hicks and Gracie black belt. He's a guy I've wanted to get on the show for a long time. I've heard good things about him for so long. Uh, I actually just met him uh, last uh, two weekends ago. We did a seminar together for my friend Jack Topher. You might have seen Jack Topher on the BJJ versus Cancer uh, video series we did on YouTube. He, he showed a lot of uh, invisible jiu-jitsu. Jack is a student of Dave Kama. Dave Kama runs the uh, Kama Jiu-Jitsu Club in Laguna Niguel, and um, he's he credits Hickson as being his main teacher, and he teaches a lot of um, great techniques that he learned directly from Hickson. So I think you'll enjoy the interview, and then uh, we'll go to techniques after that. So see you guys after the interview and techniques. Hey guys, welcome back to This Week in BJJ. Today, my guest is Dave Kama. Dave, thanks so much for coming in today. This is something we've been trying to set up for over a year now. <laughs> You're a hard man to get a hold of, but I'm happy to have you here today. And you know, a lot of our guests on this show are world champions or, you know, instructors with hundreds of students. Um, you are neither one of those, but you are one of, one of the hidden gems of Southern California. You're in a crowded market of a lot of big name instructors, but um, you're, uh, you're an awesome instructor who's been around for a long time, and I'm happy to be able to expose uh, some of these people like yourselves to uh, the wider audience out here. Um, before we get around to your, your background and history and everything, do you think we focus too much on world champions on this show? Uh, no, I think it's a good focus. I mean, if you um, if you guys are focusing on world champions, you guys are you're kind of trying to to get some of the um, uh, which everybody thinks is quality quality athletes, and everybody's interested in their opinions of you know uh, what they do and what drives them, what motivates them, and yeah. stuff. So I, I don't think it's a I don't think it's a bad thing. You know, world champions, they have to focus so much on their own training and oftentimes a very limited number of techniques to get, you know, razor sharp on all those things. Whereas a, a really good instructor has a broad knowledge of a lot of techniques to be able to guide all of his students, not necessarily on only what he's good at, but the broader picture of jiu-jitsu. And you strike me as one of those guys who, you know, you didn't focus too much on competition, but you have a very broad knowledge of jiu-jitsu. Is that a fair assessment? Uh, yeah, I um, typically ch try to stay toward um, toward basics and stuff like that. So that's where kind of where my love of jujitsu came first is um, is the basics. So, um, but I don't necessarily limit myself to basics. Um, you know, some of the um, some of the other moves that people come up with stuff like that. I'm very interested in what they're doing and how they're doing it, and um, it gives me some insight as might give me some ideas on, on my own techniques and get improve myself, improve my students. So I'm always, I try to keep an open mind on, on looking at other things. So, um, but uh, definitely my core um, would be basics. All right. Yeah. There's a lot of things I want to talk to you about today, Dave, but let's start at the beginning. Did you do anything before jiu-jitsu or was jiu-jitsu your first martial art? Uh, I did a lot. Um, I think I started first in Taekwondo. I did Taekwondo for a while. Um, and then I moved to Southern California and uh, I really couldn't find a good Taekwondo place out here at the time. So um, I found a, a um, Muay Thai gym and a Kung Fu. Uh, at the time, the, the, I wanted Muay Thai, but uh, the Muay Thai teacher was out at the time. So I took Kung Fu for a while and um, uh, quickly moved on to Muay Thai. It was more interesting to me. Uh, I was a good teacher. Uh, and um, so I took that for a while. I did an exhibition match in, uh, in Muay Thai. So I liked that. I, uh, started doing stick fighting and Kali Eskrima, so um, with Danny Inosanto. So we did that for a while. Um, I moved on to Savat, uh, just trying things out, different kind of martial arts, just to see what, what I liked. I was kind of experimenting a little bit. So I did Savat for a while, and it, when I was doing Savat, I, I had injured my, uh, my knee really bad. So I figured, okay, so Muay Thai and kickboxing wasn't going to be in my future with as bad as my knee was damaged. So um, a friend uh, that was training with us, he, he was uh, taking privates with, uh, I think it was Hoist or Horion in the, in the gyms. Around what year was this? 1980, 
86, wow. 87. So he was taking private lessons in the gym inside the uh, in the garages back then. Horian was just teaching privates in garages at the time. So um, he showed me a couple moves, and I thought, okay, well, it sounds okay, you know. And then um, then he says, okay, well, they're doing a uh, one of those. Um, advertised matches, Horian did those advertised matches in the newspaper where he says, okay, come one, come all, um, challenge matches if you can beat us, $100,000. The Gracie Challenge. Yeah. So um, uh, a couple of my friends, uh, they're wrestlers, they're really good wrestlers. So um, they always tie me up and roll me up in, a, in the corner at that time. So they took me down there and said, hey, let's go check this out. You do kickboxing, we do wrestling, we're going to check this out and see how they are. So we went to uh, El Camino College and uh, there was... Uh, I believe there was, I won't tell you the names yet, but there was three of them. There was uh, two tall Gracies and there was one shorter Gracie at the time. So um, the, the four of us or three of us were sitting up in the stands and then one by one my wrestling friends went down there to, to train and we all huddled together and said, okay, so which guy are you gonna try out? I said, well, I'll take the short guy. So one by one my, my friends, they went down there to fight the short guy. And one by one my friends got wrapped up like in two seconds and, and finished. Uh, by this shorter uh, Gracie. So then they came back and I said, okay, so it's your turn to go down there. I says, ah, you know what? Uh, says, the only thing I know is kickboxing and you guys wrapped me up in a, in a ball and that guy wrapped you up in a ball like really quick. Mm -hmm. So if I hit him and I piss him off, uh, it's gonna get really bad for me. So I'll just watch for right now. So um, the guy, the short guy they were, they were fighting with was Hickson. Mm -hmm. So they picked the best one out of the bunch. Right. So it was pretty funny. but. Um, so um, that's kind of how I got introduced to Grace Jiu Jitsu. So then I signed up right away. I called up Orion and he set, up, set me up with a private lesson with uh, Hoist, I believe. And uh, back then they had, it was in his garage, they had the group lessons in the, in the front garage and in the back side there was a, a little room they had in the back for private lessons. So we took lessons back then. So that's kind of where it started. I took one lesson and I kind of pretty much quit everything else because mm -hmm. that's really uh, the martial art that I was looking for mm -hmm. and the things that I was looking for to um, the effectiveness to um, right away you know the the grabs you grab all the arms uh, all the self-defense moves I kind of fell in love with because that's really what I was looking for in my martial arts so right. that's kind of the start of the whole thing you know you hear about a lot of guys that uh, they came across the challenge matches early on and trained with Horion back in the garage but not too many people continued their training or teaching until now were there any other guys there that are still in the scene today yeah um, Chris Saunders I think he's, he's still around um, he's still teaching um, that's he was actually I think at the time when I was training I think he was a blue belt at the time I was there um, I don't remember too many names beyond the Gracies back then that are still training. There's, I mean, since then there's big people that came in and they're still around. Mm -hmm. You know, Henry's another one of those, but, mm -hmm. um, but not anybody that far back, right. except for Chris. So I know your school is affiliated with Hickson now, but uh, do you consider him your, your sole teacher or one of your many teachers? Who do you consider your jiu-jitsu teachers? Uh, Hickson, I consider Hickson my teacher mainly. Um, definitely, you know, I've learned things from other teachers. I've, um, back in the garage days, what was happening is um, um, I was taking lessons, uh, of course, I said from Hoist, I took classes from Hoist, um, took classes from Horion, uh, Hoyler, Machados, uh, Carlos Machado. Um, so you would get shuffled around to garage to garage, you know, as you know, as the as they were busy or not busy, you would just get shuffled from one garage to another. So I've learned from several different teachers, but but the majority of my teaching and, and training has been from Hickson. Mm -hmm. So it's funny that you mentioned the Machados. It might be surprising to some of the younger viewers to hear you mention the Machados with the Gracies, but they used to all train together yeah. uh, back in the day. When they split, did you ever feel like maybe going with the Machados? Um, no, not really. I mean, I was um, by the time the Machados left, I was more taking lessons with Hickson and um, and more on on Hickson side of the fam, Hickson and uh, occasionally Hoist and and um, and Horion. So, not really. I, I just stayed with the stay with Hickson. Why did you choose I mean, Hickson? Was you know. Obviously, very much in demand with his teachings. He traveled to Japan a lot to uh, to compete and, and to teach. Back to Brazil as well. Why didn't you go to some place more stable like the Gracie Academy where Horian was? Um, 
I like Hickson's teaching. I like the way he teaches, and it's a funny story. Um, um, I tell some of my students, but when I started training, I really had no concept of how good these guys really were. I knew they were really good and they're very effective. I had no concept of like how good in the world they really were um, at the time. You know, it's all brand new in the United States. I mean, um, so. Um, I really put no mind into it. I didn't really ask a whole lot of questions of, you know, didn't really think to ask. But it wasn't until, I think, about three or four years after I had started training with him that I really found out that Hickson was the world champion. I, I, I had no idea. But by then, I was already hooked, and um, I already liked Hickson's way of training and stuff like that. So when Hickson moved off to, um, to his gym, I just followed him along, followed with him. Right. There is uh, an attitude that some people have that the Gracie family kept a lot of secrets back in the day, which is not uncommon for any martial art. They don't want to just open up everything to everybody. They keep some things held back. But some people feel that jiu-jitsu is much more open nowadays than it was back then. Did you ever feel like they were holding things back from you? Uh, I'm, I'm sure that a period from time to time I kind of felt that way. but. But no, I, you know, reflecting back on, you know, what I know now today, I say, they don't really hold anything back. They kind of, they, we kind of show everything, show everything that they know, and then they kind of teach everybody. And they, they kind of want everybody to grow up and to be as best as they can. So they, if they can show a technique that'll help you, they'll definitely help you. But a lot of times, um, I think sometimes the people really, they feel that somebody's holding back some moves. It's like, sometimes some people I think are not prepared for some of the more advanced moves. And so you don't really show them those advanced moves. You show them the beginning stuff because they, if they, they understand the basics, the, the effectiveness of the, the more advanced moves are going to be so much more. So not right now, we'll show you later. And so maybe some people take that as you know holding back. But, um, um, and you can even more so with Hickson. I mean, if you, if you roll with Hickson or if you train with Hickson or you've seen Hickson train with other people, I mean, his, his moves are, um, in my opinion, way more advanced than a lot of people. Um, probably the most advanced. And he's he um, he um, he. I don't know if you call it embarrasses, but he he. Um, a lot of world champions over the years come, and he he kind of plays with them. You know, it's, it's he's known for that. So um, so you can kind of get the idea that he's kind of holding back moves, but he really is not. I mean. It's, it's just showing you basics and stuff like that, and he'll show you how to do it, but sometimes you can't execute with the same timing and the same kind of mentality as he does. So, um, and he's, um, he's trying to, nowadays, he's trying to show that more, and I think he's, over the years, in my opinion, he's gotten better in his teaching. So, you know, all teachers grow, mm -hmm. so he's gotten better, so maybe that's why people think that. I'm not sure. Right. Yeah. You know, one thing that Hickson uh, trained a lot was uh, yoga, uh, particularly, uh, basically gymnastica natural and um, he is able to do things with his stomach that I cannot do <laughs> you can't either okay well that was my question do you, do you spend any of your time practicing any of the breathing techniques or the yoga that that maybe participated helped make him as, as incredible as he is uh, no other than the one breathing technique he does teach you know to to breathe out when you're training you know he um, he's from day one when I started training with him is always teaching you to, to blow your air out, right? So your body naturally pulls in, pulls in air, right? So as you're training, people think, oh, I can't breathe, so they, they're trying to suck in air all the time. Like, so better that you blow out the bad air and then you suck in good air. So I, I practice, I try to keep that in mind all the time. So when you get, you get winded or you, get, you, um, you feel like you're in trouble, you don't have enough air, so it's better for you to blow your air out so the air comes back in. Um, the exception being if somebody's crushing your lungs. Mm -hmm. I mean, that would be, you know, you kind of have to uh, work that out. But generally speaking, if you blow the bad air out, you get another load of good oxygen, and your, your body gets more oxygen in your brain, so you, you're able to think better. Mm -hmm. So, You know, a lot of things that Hickson is talking about these days sounds like internal martial arts. You hear him talk about relaxation and connection and flow. And you didn't hear those terms before in jiu-jitsu, but you often heard it in, uh, in, like I said, internal martial arts, tai chi, aikido, and stuff like this. Do you think he's looked outside of jiu-jitsu for some answers, or do you think that he's just explaining things the same way people have for the past hundreds of years? Uh, looks outside. I um, don't really know how to answer that other than and I don't know what he's done to improve his, his learning or his training or his ideas. I know Hickson, 
um, in my impression from what I've seen, Hickson is um, he's very, um, very deep and he likes to look into those kind of things. So I'm not sure where he's got his inspiration for a lot of that, but it really inspires him and he likes it. And it really, it, um, it really helps him to think to the way he does everyday life, the way he treats others. Um, it really helps him. So, but I'm not sure where he got his inspiration for all that.